I'm just outside of Arches National Park in southeastern Utah near the town of Moab and the highway behind me, Highway 191, uh, has an exceptional road cut that shows some of the faulting and some of the geologic processes and features that help form this area. So Moab sits in a valley, like many, uh, there's several valleys that kind of trend northwest, southeast throughout this part of Utah. And these valleys all formed by uh, a unique type of geologic process known as uh, salt tectonics. And so what we had here during the Pennsylvanian period uh, was a lot of deposition of salt. So there was an, a restricted seaway, lots of salty type of uh, material was deposited. Once that stuff was buried, the salt having lower density actually started to flow upwards. And in the process of doing so, it actually domed up the rock surface to create a fold called an anticline. So there's a series of these northwest, southeast trending anticlines across southeastern Utah and into Colorado. And the Moab Valley sits in one of these salt anticlines. These areas were actually later reactivated by faults. And one of those faults that runs right down the valley that Moab sits in is called the Moab Fault. And there's a great exposure of it just across the uh, uh, road here along Highway 191. Faults typically aren't one specific fault. Many faults uh, sort of splinter or splay upwards into several fault systems. And that's true here. If we kind of get a little bit closer, you can see sets of faults that have dropped some of the rocks down and pushed other sets up. This is all part of the Honaker Trail Formation. This is a, a Pennsylvanian aged rock formation about, oh, I don't know, 300 or so million years old. And you can actually see some of the faults in there that have caused it to drop. So a nice classic textbook example of faulting within a fault zone. So you've got individual faults dropping maybe a few feet. Some of the bigger ones, like the one down here that has the gray rock on one side and the reddish rock on the other, that's one of the probably major faults uh, in the fault zone. In part two of this video, I'll do a part two for the Moab Fault, where I actually show you it uh, in a little bit closer detail, and also look at some of the fossils in the Honaker Trail Formation. But as kind of a final thing here, I'll wheel around so you can see the visitor center for Arches National Park. All the rocks over there, the low rocks behind the visitor center, that's Navajo sandstone, that's a Jurassic Age sandstone. The same sandstone you see at Zion National Park formed by large windswept, windswept sand dunes. And then stacked above that are some younger Jurassic sandstones uh, culminating with, uh, I believe that's the Entrada Formation up there at the top. But when we swing around to the opposite side, which is a little harder to see up in the sunlight there, that's Wingate Sandstone. The Wingate Sandstone actually sits below the Navajo Sandstone. So what we're seeing here is some of the effects of the faulting, that the west side of the Moab Fault has pushed things up, elevating the Wingate Sandstone on the rim there, and the east side of the fault down by the visitor center has been dropped down, uh, exposing the Jurassic sandstones here, including the Navajo sandstone. So we're gonna head down uh, to a little exposure down here in the gully, and that will be part two of this little video series. Uh, I've come just, just a few, maybe, I don't know, 30 yards or so from where the part one video was shot, looking at the road cut across the highway. Down in this little wash here is a really spectacular exposure of one of the main traces of the Moab Fault as it comes through here. Uh, and this is typical of what we see of a lot of what we call normal faults. Normal faults are where uh, a vertical fault where one side goes up, one side goes down. Uh, and in this case, they're caused by extension. So what we have here is this gray rock is on the upthrown side of the fault. This is the gray limestone of the Honaker Trail formation. Uh, it's Pennsylvanian in age, about 310 or so a million years ago. And then we can see a nice sharp line just behind me here. And then these kind of dark red sandstones and mudstones, which are from the Carmel Formation. So this is a Jurassic Age sedimentary unit. Uh, if we come up a little bit closer here, uh, we can actually see 
in contact, the contact here between these two, this fault trace, the fault surface is very smooth, so the rocks are very smooth. It's actually somewhat corrugated, which is common of fault systems and fault planes. Uh, and then we can actually see these striations, so these lines that run uh, almost perfectly up and down, but kind of like uh, to the upper, from the upper right down to the lower left. This, these are called slicken lines, and these actually show us the actual movement of the fault when it was active. So as the rocks are being pulverized and grinded against each other, as the fault moves, uh, those striations or those scratch marks are preserved on the rock surface. It actually helps us to figure out which way the fault moved, showing us the last, or the indicating the last direction that the fault moved. Uh, so really spectacular. Faults um, very rarely are exposed this nicely where you have one rock type against another. So again, Jurassic Age sandstones on the right here, what we call the hanging wall, and on the downside of the fault, what we call the foot wall, are Pennsylvanian aged uh, limestones from the Honaker Creek Formation. Again, part of the uh, Moab Fault as it cuts its way through the Moab Valley. Uh, one final thing here is if we kind of scramble up above it, so you can see that the faulting has actually created a small dry fall in this wash, a little bit of an obstacle. But if we actually work our way up and get onto some of these outcrops with the limestone exposed, what we should be able to see here, if we start looking in a few places, are some of the fossils in the Honaker Trail Formation. So these little round things here, these are called crinoids. These are actually stems or columns of an organism. Some more down here. An organism that lived in the oceans. Oh, there's a great one here. So these lived in the oceans uh, millions of years ago. And there's a nice one on the side there. <clears throat> and these are actually like little stalks. So these would actually be part of like a, a sea lily plant that sort of sits up on the bottom of the ocean. Um, and it has these appendages and it just sort of filters uh, nutrients from the water. Uh, but when it dies, the usually falls over and the many of the stems break apart. So they kind of look like these little donut shaped uh, features in the rock here. Or sometimes you can see full sets of the segments still preserved. Uh, I thought I saw one other type of fossil over here somewhere. Let's see what we have right here. This sort of spiderweb <clears throat> looking thing. These are called bryozoans. So these are other invertebrates uh, that lived in the ocean. So again, some pretty interesting and very uh, cool fossils here in the Honaker Creek, Creek uh, Honaker Trail Formation, excuse me, of southeastern Utah looking over at the visitor centered arches. All those people have no idea there's such great little geologic treasures a few yards away from their cars as they hustle up the scenic drive. But we had a little inside glance here. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, looking at the Moab Fault here in southeastern Utah.